It is rare that we get the opportunity to talk positively about metals for the medicine and healthcare sector. It's even rarer when the discussion moves on to genuine new material technology developed to enhance options for engineering solutions in the sector. However, we are now seeing a new era of scientific development in metals to help engineers solve the dynamic challenges when designing medical equipment. Copper has had a vital role in everyday life for thousands of years due to its unique combination of properties. The benefits of using copper and its alloys are largely hidden from plain sight. Today, copper is absolutely critical in the day-to-day -day delivery of water, medical gas and electricity in hospitals. But wider use in equipment has often been a missed opportunity. About 30 years ago, uh, a newly qualified doctor walked into her new hospital in North America. And and what she found was that in this hospital where they were actually upgrading to stainless steel equipment throughout, uh, that the old brass door handles were not covered in microbes, they, they weren't contaminated. Most of the early papers were based on lab science. We were looking at the uh, mechanisms behind how copper works, how it destroys microbes, and we found what they call broad spectrum efficacy. Uh, that means that it will kill pretty much anything. Uh, it will destroy bacteria, viruses, fungi, all sorts of things like that. Uh, and most importantly, it destroys human pathogens. High-tech uses of copper alloys, such as critical components in body scanners, diagnostic electronics, or laser scalpel blades, is in the domain of a few select experts. But New scientific research has highlighted an intrinsic property of copper and copper-based alloys, which has brought this metal into the forefront of a critical field of endeavour – infection prevention and control. Decisions are made in the design of new products for the healthcare industry that do not take infection prevention and control seriously. Substandard material choices are made that at best increase equipment cost and at worst cost lives. For example, specifying materials that cultivate and grow rather than resisting bacteria such as MRSA. Most copper alloys have proven and powerful antimicrobial properties and may be used to reduce contamination and the propagation of infection on key equipment, making the hospital environment safer for all. Copper is essential for all life and humans and bacteria both need copper uh, to function. So there's certain chemical and biochemical processes that require copper uh, and they, human cells and bacterial cells uptake copper through certain membrane proteins. Copper alloys destroy bacteria, viruses and fungi. Rather than designing with materials that have zero impact on hygiene or even contribute to infection rates, engineers now have the opportunity to pick an alloy that meets engineering criteria and clinically benefits patients and staff. Copper undergoes a certain reaction uh, with hydrogen peroxide. Um, so a copper ion will react, will react with hydrogen peroxide. Uh, it will be oxidised to produce copper 2 plus and a hydroxyl radical. So this generates reactive oxygen species. The cell membrane is made up of a phospholipid bilayer which contains lipids and when reactive oxygen species are present they cause the lipid phospholipid bilayer to degrade and more copper can then enter the cell as a result and this is all detrimental to cell life. So reactive oxygen species can inhibit the respiratory chain and this is the basis of all cell life and energy as this produces ATP and without ATP a cell cannot normally function and therefore will undergo cell death or apoptosis. Rather than designing with materials that have zero impact on hygiene or even contribute to infection rates, engineers now have the opportunity to pick an alloy that meets engineering criteria and clinically benefits patients and staff. To help engineers challenge the status quo and consider improving designs to address the increasing risk of deadly infections, industry is stepping up to support better engineering decisions. One example of this can be found in Stoke-on-Trent, England, at a specialist material and component producer called Copper Alloys Limited. They have created a resource centre dedicated to promoting best practice material selection called the Engineer's Toolbox. It presents a range of detailed material information in a simple, user-friendly format. 
Highlights include useful tools such as the alloy selector, highly accurate weight calculators and primary research report, which are already assisting engineers in meeting the demands of the sector. Copper alloys is unique in the materials industry for manufacturing the most advanced copper-based and nickel-based metals. Recently, copper alloys has also developed a range of speciality steels, mainly for the marine environment. Copper alloys has an approach to risk that uh, is unprecedented in our industry. We take complicated projects, extreme, extremely engineered parts, and we try to de-risk them completely. Projects that other organisations had found difficult to manage, that were tricky, um, we actually could control them much better, we could de-risk them. The Copper Alloys way really is about focusing on the detail and controlling outcomes. With the dawn of new copper-based metals such as the Elite Alloys, which are stronger than steel, new options are available to combine strength and antimicrobial capability. Therefore, it is possible to use copper-based alloys much more widely than before. It is also interesting to note that many of these new alloys even look like steel. The Elite Alloys are a good example of materials that present a more elegant solution to dynamic engineering challenges. Possessing a unique blend of characteristics, they could make significant lifetime and cost benefits if incorporated into equipment design early in the product development process. The depth of knowledge that the uh, material engineers and the metallurgists at Copper Alloys have generated and um, developed over the years is really unprecedented. No one else really knows these materials uh, to the extent as uh, that Copper Alloys does. So we support engineering companies um, and we help them optimise the selection of materials um, to enhance performance, to reduce cost, uh, we always have a view on through life cost and through life performance to try and make things last longer. The wider use of copper alloys could significantly reduce contamination, infection rates and even the spread of multi-drug resistant organisms or MDROs. Material science is becoming ever more important as customers and service users demand more from less. Adjusting geometry and tweaking design can only partly address the challenges. Engineers now need to reconsider the materials we use to drive real change and performance improvement. When en engineers are looking for new materials, that they can actually find them. It's just trying to get engineers to have the thought to look at changing a material in the first place is quite difficult. There seems to be some inbuilt resistance to trying something new. And I think that again comes back to the lack of um, transparent information, lack of first-hand primary research, um, to give engineers the confidence to use some of these materials. To develop a, a new alloy, uh, it, it is mainly engineering design generated. In other words, a design engineer is looking for a specific property within a certain specification. And what we do is uh, we look at the chemistry, we look at the mechanical properties, we look at process routes, and we look at ways of maximising that particular property they're looking for, but also maximising all of the other properties, such as mechanical properties. The, the extreme properties are a result of uh, laborious R&D processes that have taken decades to refine, and now uh, the product is here, ready uh, for engineers to exploit. With the Elite Alloys, it seems like there is now no need for engineers to compromise.